Hello, Numa family. So good to see you again. Uh, so glad that you could join us online uh, for another service. I want to jump straight into the word, uh, but let's take a moment just to pause. Let's get still before the Lord um, and let's just invite him um, into our space wherever we're at. God, we're so thankful that you are here and that you're present and that you're with us and that you're speaking and that you're moving. You're moving in our hearts, God. You're, you're healing, you're touching, you're correcting, you're encouraging. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your presence, God, and that you're faithful to your word, that you are a God of integrity and of character, and we love you. And we ask all these things in your name. Amen. I want to go straight to scripture here. Go with me to Matthew chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 13 through 17 in the ESV. Then we're going to jump over to chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 1 through 11. So this is a, it's a little bit lengthy. Uh, so Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. Then we're going to jump over to chapter 4. And read verses 1 through 11. But as you go in there, I want to give you a little bit of background. So we see John the Baptist has entered into the picture. And, and he's considered like this wild man that's crying out in the wilderness. He's eating locusts and honey and he's dressed all weird. But he's telling the people to repent. Repent, turn from your ways. And he's preparing the way for Jesus to come. And in this radical message that he has, there are people that are flocking from all over the region to come and to hear him and to get baptized. Even the religious leaders are starting to show up, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he's rebuking them and he's questioning them and he's saying, why have you come here, you brood of vipers? And he's telling them to repent um, and turn from their ways as well. But he begins to speak about this person that is to come uh, that he's preparing the way for. And this is where we're going to pick up here in the scripture. In verse 13, it reads, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Now go with me to Matthew chapter four, verse one. And it reads, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. 
uh, that is alive and active and moving, even as we have read it out loud. God, we, we honor your word. We appreciate your word. We're thankful for your word that leads and guides us. God, we, we also thankful for your spirit that comes and lives on the inside of us, that is speaking to us even now about the passage of scripture that we just read. Would you break through places? Would you move and, and continue to speak to us about our lives and where we're at in this current season? We just in, in, invite you. We invite you into our spaces. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We started a new series last week called Preaching to the Choir, and I'm going to continue in that. And I, I gave this example of how sometimes Kimberly or somebody from our family, they, they come to me and maybe they're sick. And the first thing that I ask them is, hey, have you, have you drank any water? And how this can be irritating because it's, it's almost like, hey, you're telling me something that I already know. And this happens to me quite often uh, when I phone my mom and we're having a conversation. I could be telling her about uh, some sort of personal issue or something that's going on. And then she tells me, you just need to pray. You just need to pray, mom. You need to pray about it. And I'm thinking to myself, mom, did you forget that I am a pastor? Prayer is a part of my routine and my life. Uh, I am a spiritual leader. It's, it's an integral part of who I am and, and what I do. But I think it's important for us to remember and for me to remember as she's sharing this. If, if I continue or, or think about prayer, it's just a, a, a check in a box. Just to check off my list as I go throughout my, my day-to-day things, I begin to strip it of its power. I begin to take its, its power away for it to be active and, and, and to move in my life. And if we're not careful during this time, as we are in uncertainty and, and maybe we've been sharing uh, with other people about how we're doing and, and they're giving us advice and they're encouraging us and they're sharing some, maybe some simplistic things about reading the word and praying and other things, it's important for us not to familiarize ourselves or, or for these things to become common because they're powerful and God has given these tools and resources and these disciplines and these practices uh, for us to grow and to sustain us and to strengthen us and to empower us in this time and this supernatural power uh, in these things as we live them out and as we practice them. And we see uh, something else again in the scripture this morning as, as Jesus um, is, is baptized and he begins to uh, move into the fullness of his ministry. So we see Jesus, he comes from the region of Galilee and he's seeking John the Baptist out. So he's seeking out a specific relationship and in a specific place. So John the Baptist and he goes uh, by the Jordan. And this is an interesting picture. We know that they're, they're cousins, but Jesus is, is greater than John. But yet he's seeking John out for John to baptize him. And when John realizes this, he begins to backpedal and he begins to say, no, I don't think it needs to happen this way. I don't need to be baptizing you. You need to be baptizing me. And Jesus, as he hears John saying this, he begins to make his case and say, no, man, this must happen. Let's do it this way. It, let's do it to fulfill all righteousness. This is something uh, that, that we should do. It's, there's a bigger process. There's a bigger picture of something going on. And we need to align ourselves to it. So he convinces John to submit himself also to this process. So we have these two individuals who have been called by God. Who have been anointed. They have different ages. There's uniqueness about that calling and the expression uh, of their ministry, but they're both submitting their will, their ways. They're submitting it to a process that, 
that God has put in place for them. So John, he begins to put Jesus under the water. And as Jesus is baptizing, he comes back up out of the water. It said the heavens opened upon him. And it said the spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And there was an audible voice from heaven that began to, sp begin to speak and begin to say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So the voice, the audible voice wasn't for Jesus, but it was for John and those around so that they would hear. And it was another confirmation and a sign for John. God had actually spoke to John and told him the one whom my spirit descends upon. This is the anointed one. This is the Christ. This is the Messiah. So he's confirming again to John that this is the guy. But we see both of these two individuals. They had submitted themselves to God's process, to God's plans, and to God's purposes. Several years ago, our family started a nonprofit organization. And we had taken uh, several short-term trips. And God had placed on our hearts uh, to birth this thing. And the mission of it was to go into different countries, different nations, and partner with other NGOs and churches and organizations on the ground, helping them find sustainable solutions for needs within the community. So as we begin to uh, legally get all the paperwork and all these things together, we were ready to run and we were ready to go. But what happened is another opportunity presented itself uh, to me and to our family. And it was an opportunity to come along and serve on our local church staff. And at the time, this was not this wasn't necessarily uh, in my plans. It's, it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to serve alongside of the church, but I didn't want to actually work for a church. Some of that had to do with some some church herd and some other things that were going on. But as we begin to pray and as we begin to ask God, he really highlighted and said, hey, this is the next step. This is the next step right thing for you guys to do and so we we still believed that God wanted us to to travel and to continue what we were doing with our NPO but he was asking us to submit our plans uh, our vision um, all these things that we had in our mind to his process and I think oftentimes we want things we God gives us something we want things to happen overnight but God is saying, Sub submit these things, Sub submit it to my process. And we just did the next right thing, the next thing that God was asking us to do. And it was because we were, it was because we did that, that God healed things in our heart that we didn't even know were there. And it was, it was then that he established our identity. And he spoke to us and told us who we were. And we were able to move forward out of that time into a place of health and being able to minister to people out of a place of wholeness. But it was us aligning ourselves to God's process and just doing the next right thing. We see Jesus after God speaks audibly and speaks identity over him. We see that he's led by the spirit into the wilderness. And not just to go have a party in the wilderness. He's led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Really interesting here. The Holy Spirit is the one that's leading him and guiding him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So this isn't an accident. This isn't just some occurrence, but it's an intentional meeting that has been predestined for Jesus to have. And here's the reason why we see in Genesis, we see Adam and Eve, they're placed in the garden. And God gives them some instruction. He says, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we see Satan, the devil, he comes along and he tempts and Adam eats of the fruit. And, and it sin enters into the world and, and things... <laughs> go from there and now we see a picture Jesus 
the last Adam, in a redeeming moment for humanity and for mankind, as the tempter would come. And it is a moment and it is a time of restoration. So the Spirit has led Jesus into this time. And as Jesus is getting ready to head into this encounter with the devil, he fasts. He decides to fast. The scripture says that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Out of all the things that Jesus would decide to do to prepare himself for this encounter, he chooses to fast. We see the Christ, the anointed one. God in the flesh, this is the thing that he chooses to prepare himself. He chooses to abstain from food. Not from social media, not from social media, not from television, but from food. He chooses to abstain from food. And it wasn't just what he was abstaining from, but it's what he was seeking and grabbing a hold of. And this is what what fasting does. Fasting realigns us. It reorients us. It helps us uh, put our focus back on God and the things that we we need to have them on. Fasting also, it, it allows us to see the things in our life that have control over us. Control over our heart, control over our souls, the things that are making things cloudy. And oftentimes, what we do is these things that are controlling us, they usually can be covered <laughs> by food. And there are many other things that we cover them up in as well. But I don't think it's a coincidence that what Jesus is doing here as he enters into this fast, that he is choosing to abstain from food. And as this is happening, obviously he gets, he gets hungry. And here comes the tempter. Satan comes into the picture. And as they begin to have this encounter. The first thing the devil does. Is he questions what God has spoken. About Jesus. He says. If you are the son of God. Then turn these stones into bread. So he is. He's requesting. He's tempting. He's Asking Jesus to use your divinity, use your sonship, use your power to feed yourself. If, if you are who they say you are, then you can do this. The devil comes in direct opposition to Jesus' fast. He comes in opposition to the, the, the building up of his, of his spirit man. Of aligning himself with God. Of him having his focus centered on God. He comes in direct opposition of that. And Jesus is able to respond. And he says. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He's not saying he won't ever eat again. Don't get scared out there. But what he's saying is, it's not bread alone that I need to sustain me. But it's every word that comes from the mouth of God. It's the word of God. It's my relationship with him. It's my connection with him. It's the spiritual food that I receive that I need to prioritize in my life over anything physical that is happening. You would think that maybe Jesus would be more focused on his physical strength and his physical presence as Satan would come and tempt him, but it's not. It's his spirit. He wanted to make sure that he had a strong and a healthy spirit. And it was out of this place that he was able to say these things. As Satan comes directly against his flesh and this hunger that is happening in him, He's able to respond out of this place of having a healthy and a strong spirit. Several years ago, as, as I was making a transition in my career, 
I had been praying and asking God for assistance and guidance. And it was one of those things that was really cloudy. And I went to a men's retreat and had an amazing time, but didn't really hear anything there. It was only the next day. I was taking a shower and in the shower, just felt like God just dropped something in my heart and felt like he was saying, hey, it is the time to transition. It's not going to happen immediately. But at the end of the year, you need to start preparing to make the shift. So I was excited, finally got some clarity, finally got the things that I needed to in order to make the next step. But as the year got closer to ending, I began to have second thoughts. <laughs> Because this was a scary move for me. I didn't see any doors opening or the doors that I thought should open. And so I began to second guess and I began to have questions. And I was like, well, maybe um, he wants me to spend a little bit more time here. Or let me give it another six months until something kind of opens up. And so it was really unclear and I began to second guess myself. And I was fortunate enough, I had some time, it was around holiday time that I was going to my mom and dad's place and I decided to fast. I don't know what made me decide to fast. A side note, don't fast around holiday time. Not a good time to do that. I know that sounds really unspiritual, but just a practical tip there. <laughs> but so I, I decided to fast. And during this time, I was praying and seeking the Lord and meditating and worshiping and it was during this time that God revealed to me the things that were controlling my heart and that were influencing my decision. I actually knew what I needed to do, but I was trying to justify to myself to not do it. And as I began to realign myself with God, as I began to focus on him, as I began to let go of, of some of the things that, that my, my flesh craves, the picture became clearer and clearer. Safety was controlling uh, my decision making, influencing my decision making. Comfort, uh, social status, all of these things had a hold of me. And it was as I chose to move into a fast and, and begin to refocus and realign myself with God that I began to see these things very clear. And it was like I was able to, to just break them off of me during this time I called up my, my sister at the time and uh, my brother-in-law is a pastor and they were going to the movies and I asked them to come by and stop and just pray for me as I ended the fast and I didn't know it but they had two other pastor friends with them so we we all in 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 my living room and we're having this prayer meeting and after the prayer two or other three people just confirmed uh, what God was was speaking to me and the move that I was supposed to make in the transition. But this happened through me choosing uh, to, to grab a hold of this invitation that God was giving me, this God-ordained, uh, God-invitation, uh, God-initiated fast to seek his face and for him to give some real clarity in the situation. We see the devil, the next, since he can't get God on the, on the physical food and the bread, he says he takes them to the holy city and he puts them on top of the temple. Then he now tries to use Jesus' words against him. He goes and now he begins to quote scripture. He says, throw yourself off. Throw yourself down off the roof. And the scripture says that he'll send his angels to catch you and you won't cast your foot against the stone. So now we see the devil is using what Jesus is saying that man shall live by the word of God. So now he's using the word. So he's taking an isolated scripture out of, out of the ancient writings and he's trying to use it to tempt Jesus to once again act in, in, in out of his divinity and his sonship and in power. And it was this time of fasting that Jesus was able to see through the misuse and the misinterpretation and, and these false ideologies that the devil was trying to tempt him with. And, and immediately he was able to see this doesn't sound right. This doesn't match up. 
It's not the whole scripture, but it's just a piece that he's taken out. And I think for us, we need to be careful as well as as we are reading the scripture and meditating on the scripture that we don't take bits and pieces out and build a philosophy and an ideology around it. But that we eat the whole meal, that we get the whole thing. And it's, it's through our time with God when we're seeking and we're, we're fasting and we're aligning ourselves with him. And it's not just an intellectual thing, but our spirit also begins to align. That we can respond the way that Jesus responds. And he says, do not tempt the Lord your God. And then Satan, he, he tries one more time. So he takes them and he shows them all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he just says, if you just, if you just bow down and worship me, I'm going to give you an easy way to fulfill your mission here on earth. You don't have to go to a cross. You don't have to deal with the pain and the, the scrutiny and all these things that these humans are going to take you through. I'll give you what you came here for. If you just bow down and worship me, he's given Jesus this shortcut. He's given him this, this easy way to accomplish what God has sent him to accomplish. And I think for ourselves, once again, we have to be careful that there may be things in our life that, that we have our focus on, that we actually uh, have put before God and that we're focusing on and that we're worshiping. And, and they seem like they're shortcuts to get to, to, to a place of, of calling and purpose um, that God has placed upon our life. But it's through a time of consecrating ourselves and fasting and praying that we realign with, with God and his heart. And God <laughs> doesn't make artificial fruit. But he makes fruit that lasts and that grows over time and that's involved in a process. And it's out of this place, it's out of a strong and a healthy spirit from being aligned and knowing God's heart and fellowshipping with him and worshiping with him. That Jesus is able to respond once again. And he says, worship God. Worship God only. It's the only being that we worship the Lord our God. We don't take shortcuts. We don't, we don't have idols. We don't use things to, to try to make things happen in a quicker way. But worship the Lord your God and him only. And it's this time. It's the preparation. It's the things that, uh, that Jesus was doing before this encounter that he had with the devil that allowed him to respond in the way that he responded. For the last uh, 11 years, um, I, I have a time every Sunday morning that I set aside um, to fast and to seek the Lord. And it's during this time that all the things that may be influencing or controlling my, my thinking or my words or my thoughts, they get eliminated as, as, I, as I posture myself in a place of humility. And in a place of, God, I don't want to say anything that, you, that you're not saying. I, I don't want to take something out of context that you're not saying. But, but really seeking the Lord and, and humbling myself. And I believe it's, it's during this time. That God aligns me back into his purposes. Back into his, his plans and his, and his will for my life. And the things that are, that are good for me. They're not to harm me. And it doesn't mean that these things are going to happen quickly and take place overnight. But it's taking that time and incorporating it into my my, my weekly rhythm is setting aside that time every week that allows me to draw close to God 
and to allow those things that maybe I've allowed to come in to influence my thinking and my decision making uh, to be yeah, just burnt off in his presence. And I just want to encourage you this morning, maybe this is completely new for you. You've never even heard of this concept of fasting. Or maybe for some of you, you've heard it before, but it's, it's become one of those things. It's become familiar and it's become common. And maybe you've had a bad experience with it just because of maybe how people have uh, presented it to you. But this is something that God has given us and he's inviting us into this place to abstain, to let go of these things that may have control over our, our hearts and and influence in our decision making and to realign ourselves back with him and what he's saying and his purposes. If that's you, I want to pray for you this morning. And yeah, just really praying that uh, as you're thinking about these things and as a desire grows for these things, that it will be very clear that God is um, inviting you um, into this time. So God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for... Maybe the one out there and they've, this is their first time hearing um, about this spiritual discipline of fasting. God, I thank you for your word or where we can see pictures in the scriptures of how these things help us draw close to you. Your word even says, God, if we draw close to you, that you would draw close to us and you would move and you begin to speak to us and do things in our heart and help transform us. God, I also want to pray for those this morning and maybe they they have some sort of church reference and they've heard about fasting before. Maybe they've had a bad experience and they've just kind of set this thing to the side and it's something they they've just said, hey, I'm 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 not interested in that anymore. Uh, I'm good. God, will you rebirth a passion um, in their heart? God, will you extend the invitation this morning for them to seek your face? God, for them to abstain from, from the, the cravings of their flesh and to come, God, and partake of your spiritual food. God, we thank you for our time this morning. We thank you for moments like this. Will you remind us of these things that you've given us, God, to grow and develop our relationship with you we thank you for that this morning and we ask these things in your son jesus name amen